Hello everyone, Richard Schneeman here, or at Schneems on Twitter and GitHub. Today we are going to be using joins inside of Active Record. Uh, this is going to be one of the longer methods that we're going to be taking a look at, and we're actually going to split it up into two parts. We've got an inner joins and an outer joins. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and have a product class, and this product class is going to belong to our user, and then we have a user class, and that is going to have many products. Uh, so it goes uh, it goes both ways. Uh, so we can say something along the line of product.joins user. So this isn't going to do anything off the bat, but we can also, once we are joining on that user, we can add additional uh, queries. So we might add... Uh, get the products where the user's name is Richard. So let's uh, let's actually go ahead and jump into the console and just uh, try this out real quick. All right, here I am inside of the console. I've got a whole bunch of fake. All right, so I've got a whole bunch of things inside of my database. I've got products, I've got users, I created a bunch of fake data, uh, and I have one that has my name in it. So we can do user dot where name. Richard. All right, there we go. Uh, there's only one of me. And uh, if we pull the first one, we can see that I have some products. So there you go. Now, what if? but what if we didn't know that? What if we wanted to do that in uh, one query rather than pulling out the user named Richard and then pulling out all of the products of the user named Richard? That's that's two queries, you know. Um, <clears throat> We can see here, you know, that's one query and that's two queries. Uh, we can do all of that just kind of in line. So let's uh, let's try that out. So we would, we want our products to be returned. So we're going to start off with product. So we're going to say product dot joins user. Now that we've joined our user, we can uh, actually get some do, put a put a where query where clause on that uh, association. So we can say where and then users. And then inside of those users, we want to say uh, name is Richard, right? So there we go. And what this is going to do, it's going to pull back all of the products. We're going to join all of the users. And then we're going to limit by uh, users where the name is Richard. So this should be all of my products. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And there you go. Uh, let's. Uh, you can see that we do this in only one SQL query. And uh, if we compare that to what we had previously, it is um, it's the same thing. You know, we get the get the same product. So this is uh, this is one way we can do this type of a query through um, through joins. All right. So you might be wondering what exactly a join is. So I'm going to jump back over to my slides real quick. So inside of your database, we're going to store things inside of tables. Here we have a users table, and we also have a products table. Uh, both of them have primary keys. The users table has a name column, a job title column. The products table has a user ID, that's the foreign key, and a name column, as well as a price column. So uh, because we have this foreign key association, we can associate these two together. We can say that uh, this product belongs to this user. Now, let's go ahead and join that data based on that information that, that we know. The Inside of the database, the result is going to be a virtual table. It's not going to actually look 100% like this. It's not going to have nice uh, ASCII art boxes, but it is going to be a row of this, of this data. Uh, we are going to get a virtual user's products table. So here we've got all of the information for our user, which is... Richard, me, I'm a global executive, thank you very much, and a, are, are the products that that user owns. So we can see here that the ID of the user and the foreign key of user underscore ID both match. So with this, uh, you might notice that we have two different IDs. So we've got user ID and products ID. So in our SQL, it's actually necessary to limit and say, hey, we specifically, we want the ID, but give us the give us the products ID. In this scenario, the result of that would be uh, 2124. Eh, seems, to, seems to make sense. And uh, even if you 
if you have a column that isn't duplicated, then we can still limit and specify which section of this virtual table we're pulling it from. And we want to say users.job title. In that scenario, we would be getting back global executive. So this is what it actually looks like whenever you join something inside of the database. Again, we have two ID columns and you can differentiate. You can, if other columns match as well, that's fine. We can still differentiate between the two. You'll also notice that when we did this inside of Rails, we only actually got back our products. Even though we, in, we, we sent the query to the database, it made this virtual table, it did that where lookup based on the virtual table. Well, um, in, we, we basically told Rails that we're only interested in the, in the first part. So when we said, if we say user.joins something, then we're going to only pull back our users from that, uh, that join. If we say product.joins, we're only going to be pulling back products. So I like to think of it in terms of whatever I start with. If I start with my product class, then I'm going to get either an array of products or an individual product, or, you know, maybe there's always the chance of nil. But, um, that's uh, that's generally how I like to think about it. And so if you if you want a product, start with product and then you can join whatever else you want onto it and then use those queries and those um, those different types of uh, parameters in you know like where clauses to go and get the data, the specific data that you're looking for. All right, so this is everything we've been using so far is called an inner joins. If we were to call dot two sql on this, you will see that um, it's actually going to be saying select products from products, inner join users on users dot id equals products dot user id. So that's the the foreign key and the primary key. Um, there is one other type of join, and we can. Um, there we go. So, uh, but specifically, the the default join for Rails, and generally the default, most commonly used join, most people will use, is an inner join. So the 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 question, hopefully on your mind, is all right. Well, you know, I understand the concept of a join, but inner join. What you know? Why specifically inner? What's um what's an inner join? So with this command, we are saying all right. I want you to go out there, get all of the users that have an ID get all of the products that have a user underscore ID, and then match them up. So if in order, we have to have three components in order to have an element in our virtual table. So it's got to have a user with an ID, a product with a user underscore ID, and, and they have to match. So all three of those have to happen for us to get that inner join. Um, but you know, because of that, it's a little bit exclusive. So um, if we have a user that doesn't have any products, then it's not going to show back up because we we didn't join that. Now I'm going to take a take a little bit of a tangent and just ask a, a general question. Uh, what if we wanted to find a product with no users? So users has many products. Products belongs to user. Um, what attribute in our database do we know? Uh, will will happen whenever a product doesn't have any users or doesn't have a user I guess in this situation so well we know that the user underscore ID would be blank so let's go ahead and see if we can pull that up with SQL so we're going to create a product here it doesn't have any users we can see so uh, product dot user it's returns nil and then we can query our product table and say product dot where user ID is nil, and uh, the first product it will be the one that we just created. So there you go. That is one way we could get all of our products that don't have a user associated with them. All right. What if we wanted to find a user with no products? Now this is a little bit more tricky um, because we're talking about joins. You might be tempted to just say like, "Hey, yeah, let's join the data together." Yeah, let's join the data together. Um, and this, you know, this kind of makes sense. We we would start off and we would create a user that doesn't have any doesn't have any uh, products, and then we would do something like this. Maybe we're gonna say, "Hey, give me a user that who's you know we were specifically looking for the user we just created, so they've got a name of Charles. We're gonna join products, and we want the first user where products." 
ID is nil. That, that hopefully that should make a little bit of sense. You know, we're, we're so we're doing we're building that uh, virtual table, and if we call products dot ID, it should not exist. Based on the level of skepticism I've got in my voice, what do you think is going to happen whenever I hit enter? Well, the result's going to be nil. And this might be a little confusing, and you might say, hey, you know, why exactly is that? But let's think back to what an inner joins is. So we have to have a user ID, we have to have a product user ID, underscore ID, and they have to match. So in this scenario, our product doesn't have a user underscore ID because it doesn't exist. So since it doesn't match, it's not going to be in that virtual table. I know, right? Um, I like to think of inner joins. Well, so an inner join does connect uh, foreign and primary keys, but it's exclusive. It's a it, it's the inner circle. It excludes relationships that don't exist. And so I think of inner join as a very exclusive club. And most of the time, you're going to want to use this. Most of the time, you only want products that have a user or users that have a, a product, vice vice versa. Um, so this is pretty good default functionality. But sometimes, if we want to do this query, um, then we would also have to do something along the lines of a um, outer join. So the outer join is a, a little bit more inclusive. It's a little bit wider than our our inner joins. And what an outer join is going to do is going to take all the users that we have in our entire system and match them up with a product, even if no matching product exists. Okay, so previously we had to have a user ID, we had to have a user underscore ID, and then finally they had to match. So that last condition doesn't, um, actually we only have to have one out of those three for an outer, outer joins. Um, we have to have a user ID, that's it. Um, all right, so this would be an example of an outer join. So uh, we've got our, our Chuck, who also happens to be a global executive. And whenever we make this virtual table, we do this joins, then it's going to be empty on the product side, just like we expected, because there are no products for Chuck yet. We haven't ad added anything into our database. So if we call products.id on this, then it's going to return nil, just like we expected. All right, um, so uh, just again, real quick, we can make a new user that doesn't have any products. Uh, and now we want to use a left outer join. So specifically, we are telling it, uh, well, uh, first of all, I guess Rails doesn't have this built in yet as an easy way that I know of to do an outer join, but we can manually enter in the SQL. So we have to say left outer join, and then we tell it what we're joining. So we're joining products, and then we tell it we are joining on users.id is our primary key, and products.userid is our foreign key. From there, we already, we so we've successfully made that join table, that virtual table, and now we can do a query on it and search for products where the ID is nil. So if we take a look at that, there we go. We've got our user. So um, we were able to successfully make that query. Perfect, just uh, just what we wanted. Um, and we can count and see that it's only one. Um, maybe you might be asking, okay, so I understand inner join, that's the exclusive thing. I understand outer joins, that's the you know inclusive thing. But what about what about this left part? So um, on our database table, when we said we are going, it's okay. We want the users, even if they don't have an associated product. Um, that's that's the area where we we picked essentially which um, either our product or our uh, or our user that we wanted. So in this case, we we want our user. So it's a left outer joins. Typically, I just use left outer join. Uh, some databases don't even support right outer joins. All right, and just to further prove this, if we do user.count and then product.count, so we're counting the number of products that have user IDs, we are using distinct true. And um, then we're gonna see that those two add up. Okay, so little quick question here. So we've got 1,802 different users, we've got 2,403 different products. It, it, what, if, what happens if we count user.joins products? Dot count. So user.joins products.count. Um, 
you know, what's actually going on here. So we're, we're making this virtual table and we're going to be, we're going to be counting it. Well, in this scenario, when I, whenever I hit enter, go ahead and try to think of the answer yourself. Um, for me personally, um, I, well, we're going to get, get to that just in a second. Um, you want to think about what exactly is going on. So think about that virtual table with the, with the inner joins on our right hand side or our left hand side, we're going to have users on the right hand side. We're going to have products. So we've got a user named Richard, who's a global executive. Thank you very much. Um, who happens to own a product called auto amp that costs $901. Well, they can own more than one product. So every single product that Richard owns is actually going to show up in our virtual table. So if they open, uh, if they own milk, if they own shoes, whatever, that's going to all be different rows in the table. And that's because we need all of that data. Um, if, they, if it was blank on the user side, it would mean that the product wasn't owned by anyone. But it is, so uh, we want to represent that in a virtual table. So if we go back and we, we do that count, um, we're going to get a number that is greater than user count and less than product count. And in this scenario, it's uh, 2,401. So, uh, you know, why was that? Really, what are we counting? So in, in this scenario, we're actually counting the number of times a user ID from products that exists and an ID from user that exists match. So we, again, it's an inner joins. We have to have all three of those conditions. Uh, when that happens, as it happens, there are 2,401 products in our database that are, are owned by a user. So what this actually means is that we have two different products in our database that are not owned by a user, uh, is, is one way to think about it. Essentially, we're, we're counting the number of user IDs on products. So, uh, you know, maybe you picked up a little bit. Maybe uh, you, you learned some about joins. Uh, joining can be hard. It can be kind of a little bit to wrap your, your mind around. Uh, but it is extremely powerful. It is extremely useful, actually, once you, once you get used to it. And, um, you know, just take it slow. Take it one step at a time. And think of it in terms of building these virtual tables and think of inner join versus outer join, exactly what's going on. And then you'll be able to get the hang of it. So again, inner join is exclusive. Outer join is going to be everything. So use reference, go slow. Uh, that is all I've got for joins today. Thank you very much for, well, joining me. And the next section that we're going to be covering in ActiveRecord is going to be group. Stick around.